It's time to welcome the Wine Ladies with Georgia and Suzanne. An entertaining hour topped up with great ideas about wine, where to dine, anything and everything to do with the vine. Great conversation, lots of laughter, guests from all walks of life, food and wine, music, art, sports, and much more, all on The Wine Ladies. Hi, everybody. It's us, The Wine Ladies. I'm Georgia. And I'm Suzanne. And welcome to The Wine Ladies, one sip at a time. Now, as you can see, we're not in studio today, but rather we are filming on location. We are in the beautiful, quaint, and historic town of Niagara-on-the-Lake, found on the southern shores of Lake Ontario where the Niagara River ends its journey into the Great Lake. And we feel quite at home here in Niagara-on-the-Lake because we're surrounded by beautiful vineyards, stunning wineries with all award-winning wines. And they have an incredible culinary program here as well. And apart from the food and the wine, there is so much to experience here at Niagara-on-the-Lake, from the Shaw Festival Theatre, spas, miles, to ride and to bike and museums, and just an incredible place. They have it all here. And if you want to stay for a night or maybe several nights, they have fabulous bed and breakfasts here to enjoy from the traditional to the contemporary to even the country style, even small cottages as well. We're now going to head over to the Baroque House, which offers up a special treat for the real art lover. It's a beautiful, beautiful house. So I'm standing here with Judy McPhail. Uh, Judy is the property manager over here at the Baroque House. This is a dream place for an art lover. Let me tell you, the artwork in here is absolutely incredible. And this entire cottage rental is just something like I've never seen before. Absolutely gorgeous. Judy, tell me a little bit about what inspires you about this property. You are obviously so enthusiastic about it. Oh, it's beautiful. Everywhere you look, there's stained glass, hand-blown glass. The metal art is incredible. The stonework, it's... uh, Each room has a a fireplace and a a TV and its own space. And everywhere you look, it's exciting. Every time I come in, I see something new, and it's beautiful. Oh, absolutely. It's a feast for the eyes, I have to say, for sure. When we were going throughout the house, like you open the door and there's so much detail that is spent on every little fixture, every little part of uh, part of the house. It's unbelievable. Also, so this is a cottage rental. So tell us how that works. So you rent the whole house. You rent the whole house. Yeah. Um, you, it has everything you need to, to enjoy your stay. Mm-hmm. If you want someone to cook for you, we can bring someone in to cook. If you need transportation, we have a limo company uh, locally. Um, you rent uh, the whole place and uh, it has a lot of individual rooms that you can have privacy but you can have a lot of people in here and you've got good you've got a good location here you're very centrally located you're a stone's throw away from a couple of the wineries i hear there's a great bakery nearby too there is our local bakery the pie plate um everything's made from scratch you can walk there for breakfast lunch we have a uh, trius winery almost across the street they have mm-hmm great um, musical functions there as well and pillatory wineries within walking distance a lot of uh, banks and uh, breakfast place and grocery stores it's uh, really a great central location for Niagara on the Lake. Okay Judy well thank you so much for speaking with us we look forward to coming and staying here. Okay well thank you appreciate it and everyone's welcome. (laughs) Hi, so I'm standing here with Karen Falesco. Karen is an unbelievable artist. We're here at the Baroque House. Karen, what an amazing job you've done here. Maybe we can start off with you telling us, this all started off with the doors? The front doors. Um, Jim, who is an um, art patron and uh, a resident of Niagara, um, bought the, the, garage, the front doors from the old train station uh-huh. in Niagara Falls and actually the tiles. And from there, he built and designed the house around that. You're an artist, but you're also, you also do a, deal a lot in metals? Right now, my, my focus is on metal work. Um, I do everything from fountains to custom art pieces um, to custom gates. Um, the sign out front with the grapes on it was done by me. Um, the door knockers, furniture. Um, my work can be seen all over um, Niagara. So you also design, you make the designs for the stained glass pieces, which are abundant in this, in this, in the Baroque house. Unbelievable. Yes. It's just a dream place for an art lover and for somebody that wants to come and enjoy Niagara on the Lake and all it has to offer. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Karen. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. 
kids, we're going to be heading over to Green Oaks, a beautiful country B&B that backs onto the ravine vineyards. Unbelievable. All right, well, our adventure continues here in Niagara-on-the-Lake wine country, and we're at our second B&B here this afternoon. We're at the fabulous Green Oaks, and we've got Trish Bedham here, who is the owner of the Green Oaks. And uh, first of all, this has been a lot of fun already. I love the chickens that you've got here. <laughs> Thank you. Now, uh, is that part of the, uh, the whole uh, charm of the Green Oaks uh, uh, B&B? You know, you'd be surprised how many people have never actually been close to chickens. And so when they come here, they just absolutely love having these chickens run up to them when they drive in. As I've got some guests coming right now, uh, the chickens will come and see them and they'll just think that's great. And then I have to keep giving them food to give to the chickens. So tell us a little bit about Green Oaks. Um, first of all, you were saying that it's a over 100 years old. Yes, it was built 100 years old by um, descendants of the Lowrys. And the Lowrys actually own, or descendants of the Lowrys, own the vineyard right behind me. And this one was built by one of the sons who was a doctor at the University of Toronto. Fantastic. So this is actually Ravine Vineyard, which is behind us. And it is located in the St. De David's Bench, which apparently is 20 degrees warmer than the other sub-appellations here in Niagara. Okay, I didn't know that. All I knew is that anything I grow here grows great. Our soil is wonderful here. So even a person like me who can't grow anything can do it here. So what's your vision of the B&B? &B? Um, I wanted something that was very comfortable and warm to come to. And um, I think it's a lot of people's dream to run a B&B, &B, and it was one of mine, and I'm basically um, living it. It's always wonderful when you can live your dream. Absolutely. Now, in terms of the decor, how did you, what did you, how did you design the decor of the home? Okay, so antiques was not really my thing when I bought the home and, you know, everything I owned could actually just fit into one little room because, of course, I came from Toronto. Mm -hmm. And when I started renovating this home, this house was a tear-me-down when I bought it. Really? And people didn't actually believe that I could do this, a single female from Toronto, to renovate this home. And the house started getting renovated and I needed to buy furniture. So every Saturday I went to auctions and just started to put it together. And it's slowly coming together for me. Well, it's absolutely beautiful. And also part of the bed and breakfast is the breakfast part. And you are the chef here as well. I am the cook. <laughs> I would not give myself credit for a chef. Um, but yes, every morning I go out, I get some eggs, find out what's happening in my garden and um, make it for them. Now, I think you're going to actually make us a delicious breakfast here this morning. And... Let me guess, is there going to be eggs on the menu? Yes, there will be. And you will take a look at those wonderful orange yolks and you will be amazed. And then afterwards, I think George and I are also going to go for a bicycle ride because we understand that your your B&B &B is also on the bicycle route. Yes, I am. So from me, there are two restaurants, Ravine Winery and another one in walking distance. And in a short mm, five kilometer radius, there's about four or five different uh, wineries. Well, thank you, Trish. Uh, George and I are looking forward to having some real fresh eggs for breakfast, and your place is absolutely stunning. Thank you so much. Okay, well, I'm ready for those eggs. Ah, here she goes. Oh, here oh, you go. Oh, my wow. goodness. So everything's here. amazing. Wow. It's coming from my garden. I just went out and bought those tomatoes and the basil and the asparagus, and of course, we know where the eggs came from. We do. <laughs> <laughs> and then just a little bit of cheese sauce to the side, always on the side. Enjoy. That was beautiful. Trim. You just whip that up like in like in a heartbeat. Well, you know when wow, things are fresh, fresh, it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> Looks great. Thank, Thank you, so you so much. much. What a treat.
We are in these incre in this incredible wine cellar over here in Niagara on the Lake, Pilateri Estates. We are here with Charlie Pilateri. He is the CEO of this magnificent operation. Uh, it, this is just an unbelievable place. Charlie, welcome. Thank you. Welcome here. We're really <laughs> happy to have you here. Well, you know, maybe you can start off by telling us a little bit about Pilateri Estates. It's, it's got a phenomenal story, steeped in history, in Italy, of course. Well, we are, we're Italian heritage, and uh, we've been making wine now for almost 20 years in Niagara. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pilateri Estates uh, is a family business. Uh, we're all here, my sisters. My sister Lucy is a CMO, and my sister Connie is CFO. And I'm in charge of uh, sales and production. I'm the CEO. And uh, we've got my nephew Richard, and mom and dad are still in the business, so we're a family business, and we've been doing this for quite some time, but we love making wine. So we're going to be tasting a little bit of red wine uh, down in the cellar here, so tell us a little bit about, about that. Well, uh, Pilatari is known mostly for its Cabernet Franc, and I think uh, we do a, a beautiful Cabernet Franc. We also do some other blends as well, but more so the Bordeaux-style wines. So uh, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, and Cabernet Sauvignon are our workhorses. I do have a Cabernet Sauvignon that I'd like to try with you. Okay. Uh, this is from the 2010 vintage, okay. and uh, this particular wine was uh, produced right from this home field. So uh, in most uh, vintages, we classify our wines. So if, uh, if the vintage has more than 2,100 heat units in a specific vintage, here we go, ladies. Thank you. Then um, we will classify the wines. We've only made uh, reserve or family reserve in uh, 1995, 1998, uh, 2002, 2007, and now 2010. So this will be a classified vintage uh, from uh, the 2010 vintages. And also 2012 looks wonderful too, so we're pretty excited about the vintage coming up. So should we try something else? Yes, why don't we? Charlie? Absolutely. Let's, I've got another, I'm going to pour you a little bit of Merlot here too. Uh, I think it'll work very well. The 2010 vintage just, just shines with so much fruit. Same vintage again. Same vintage, uh, just 100% Merlot here. Okay, uh, thank you. In most uh, Merlot fields, we always have some difficulty with winter kill and things like that. Yeah. But uh, we've now installed all of the wonderful wind machines that you see around Niagara, and uh, we haven't lost any vines in the last couple of years. So the Merlot is really starting to come out really beautiful. And uh, this is planted, uh, my dad planted this in 1991. So coming on almost 20 year old vines here. Okay, so I think we're going to taste this and then we're going to try some ice wines. Oh, we're going to go upstairs after that, are we? Absolutely. Right. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers ladies. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling awfully hungry. We're here on the Pilateri patio, and we are going to have, we're going to be treated to some wonderful oysters from Tide and Vine Oyster Company. We're here with Michael Langley, the chef here. Michael, what have you got planned? What have you got before us? Uh, today, we have brought for you some uh, melt packs from Melpac Bay, Prince Edward Island. Mm -hmm. It's a very sweet and salty oyster. Um, we also have some citrus pickled horseradish to go on top, mm. and a red wine vinegar and shallot mignonette and our uh, house cocktail sauce. Wow. And we're gonna follow it up with an Atlantic peach and local zucchini skewer on the barbecue and our Atlantic lobster roll with a caper and tarragon mayo. Well, wow. I know Charlie's got some fabulous white wines planned for us, mm -hmm. so I'm sure it's gonna be an incredible lunch. Well, I know we've had, we've had the occasion to enjoy Michael's food a number of times now, and I have never been disappointed. It's always been absolutely delicious, and I expect it's going to be the same this time. Let's hope so. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Okay, so for lunch, uh, we really enjoyed that beautiful uh, Pinot Grigio. The, the Pinot Grigio uh, is a 2011 vintage. Uh, is from one, some of our older vines here at Pilateri, uh, planted in 1993. And uh, it goes very well with the oysters. The, the oysters, the Malpec oysters and Pinot Grigio, to me, are a perfect match. And the second wine we actually had was uh, a wine called Protagonist. And Protagonist, with that lobster sandwich, absolutely delicious. Uh, a blend of Riesling and Gewurztraminer with a little splash of Sauvignon Blanc in there, too. Uh, wonderful uh, new label, a new look for Pilateri, and uh, an exciting wine uh, with the lobster sandwich. And the salad was great, too. So we, uh, what a great lunch. 
Okay, well, we just had an incredible lunch here at Pilateri, and now we're going to enjoy ice wine, which is one of the things that Pilateri is most known for. So, Charlie, what are we going to be enjoying this afternoon well, with I, you? I thought, that, uh, I thought the best thing for us to do is to have uh, a little cross-section of ice wines. So we're going to be tasting a Riesling ice wine to start. And uh, Riesling is, is always a beautiful, beautiful ice wine. It always has lots of color and uh, great viscosity. But the aromatics from Riesling is just always the best, I think. So uh, this particular ice wine, absolutely delicious uh, Riesling from Uncle Charlie's Farm. So, cheers. Mm, cheers. Cheers. Let's make some noise. <laughs> I'm going to be pouring now, the, the second ice wine I'm going to pour for you is a Cabernet Sauvignon ice wine. Okay. Now, Cabernet Sauvignon ice wine is not typically uh, an ice wine that you would see very much of. It's just because the yields are so small. The colors here, you can't, you can, it looks kind of, you know, light, light rosé-ish, but um, not really that dark, but pretty good color for a red ice wine. Red ice wines okay. predominantly don't have a lot of color to them because the skins have almost lost their color, most uh -huh. of their color during uh, their freezing and thawing on the vine. And I know, Pilateri, you are known as, uh, you have wonderful uh, VQA wines as well, but you're over 50, I think around 50% of your production in a good year is, is all about ice wine. It's all ice wine. Uh, we, we only make uh, about, I'd say, half of our production is regular wine. The other half of our production is ice wine. So we're, our ice wine harvest is twice as long as our regular harvest. So we're squeezing a lot during uh, December and January and it's a long, long harvest. But uh, everything's VQA and uh, everything's 100% Canadian. We don't, we don't do any imports. It's all local product and, and really dynamic, really exciting local product with with lots of longevity and ageability too. So. Now this is incredible. I just, if we can just take a, a moment to talk about this other uh, unbelievable ice wine you have. Right. What is what is this one called? And tell us a little bit about this uh, one. This is called uh, Exclamation Ice Wine, mm -hmm. and Exclamation is our reserve line. Uh, this was one of our first attempts at doing Sauvignon Blanc ice wine, and uh, we've had a lot of demand for 750 bottles. So we said, let's make a decanter. So we made a beautiful decanter bottle with uh, Sauvignon Blanc. 2009 uh, ice wine in it, absolutely delicious. Selling here at the winery for $150, so wow. uh, something really special. Yeah, I think it's worth every penny. That uh, looks amazing. Cheers, Thank you. cheers ladies. Cheers. 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 We're now going to head over to a beautiful B and B called Country Willows, nestled among five acres of vineyards, wineries, and orchards. So now I'm over here at Country Willows and Beverly DeVolan is the proprietor here. She's been the owner for six years and this place is on 4.5 acres of lush gardens. It's absolutely gorgeous and clearly that is, um, I think, one of the big drawing cards here. So Beverly, welcome. Tell us a little bit about your incredible B&B. &B. Thank you. Um, well, we have three rooms mm -hmm. and uh, there is a private entrance to the B&B &B rooms. We have two rooms, the Gewurztraminer and Chardonnay rooms, have king size beds, lots of room, couch in the rooms. Uh, we have another room, Pinot Noir room on the main level with mm -hmm. its own private courtyard. Um, of course, all our guests can walk around the uh, property at their leisure. I have to tell everybody, it's very romantic, it's very elegant. You were saying that you get a lot, well, it's interesting, you get a lot of folks that come here like for their honeymoons, because mm -hmm. you do have that beautiful private courtyard for one of the rooms, and then you also have enough space for like families to come. Yes. Yeah, it's wonderful. Now, I understand that, um, you well, you do a lot on this property. I mean, it's 4.5 acres. One of your specialties are uh, one of your breakfast items, and I believe you said your mum is the baker of that. What? Tell me a little bit about that. Well, my mother does a lot of the baking for me, mm -hmm. as we do all of the cooking. And uh, one of her items that is uh, very popular are pecan pie mini muffins. They're quite decadent. People really like them. They often want the recipe, and we do share recipes. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> so um, how far? Now, I know that you also have quite proximity to a number of wineries. I think you said Inniskillen, Mary Nissen. Uh, there's a couple of others as well. Yes, uh, Frog Pond Farms is mm -hmm. just down the road. Um, as you said, uh, Mary Nissen is around the corner on Concession 1. Inniskillen is close by on uh, line two. There's Pond Views, Caroline Cellars uh, between the lines. We really are within um, good traveling distance to a lot of wineries. Also, 
people really enjoy bringing their bicycles here and bicycling ah. to these. Uh, yeah. And we have lots of room to keep bicycles, etc. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So. <laughs> so I just have to tell everybody, if you are looking for an idyllic, elegant, and romantic place to come for a weekend, you really must come and see Beverly over here. The place is decorated meticulously and it's got an absolutely wonderful feel to it so hopefully um we might be coming by here one of these days Beverly what do you think that would be great we would welcome you thank you okay thank you so much thank you. this is an incredible view from the back here we're just about to enjoy one of these famous pecan pie muffins what a glorious setting and I'm ready to dig in and now, Suzanne, speaking of B&Bs, we're going to head over to Maria's B&B, known for old world charm and elegance. All right, well, I'm going to really enjoy this interview, I think. Uh, we're sitting here with Kent Gore, who is the proprietor here at Maria's B&B. And believe it or not, he is a retired chef, and uh, he doesn't want anyone to know about that. <laughs> That's our little secret here at Maria's. And uh, you know what? It, it's not going to be a secret any longer, for sure. Well, the, the whole idea about it is to, to get our, uh, our future B&B guests coming to Maria's and, and find out what we do have to offer here. So and the secret's out, maybe, yeah. Not to worry. Oh, you've got my favorite here, chocolate-covered strawberries and chocolate-covered apricots. They're delicious. You have a little glass of wine with them, a few nuts. Uh, it's all good in the afternoon or evening when you're sitting around relaxing. Yep, it's a, a nice uh, aperitif uh, to uh, relax by. So tell us a little bit about the B&B. What's your, what's your philosophy here at uh, Maria's B&B? Um, since we're new owners, we're, we're just coming into our first year of ownership, so we didn't have any preconceived ideas of how to run a B&B. &B. Um, my uh, past career as an executive chef uh, for you know almost 30 years uh, lends itself to or I was in a high-end hotel, so we try to bring a, a high-end product to Maria. So we uh, want to do it in a way where it's comfortable, comfortable for our guests, and we want to do it in a, a low-key manner. But we want all the uh, the uh, T's crossed and the I's dotted, and all the uh, little things that go uh, go unnoticed uh, by the guests. But in the end, uh, it's much appreciated. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of the decor, would you say this is more of a contemporary decor, or what would what would be the style of this B and B? Yeah, we try to do uh, a little upscale, maybe French country look. Um, uh, we've done away with the uh, doilies and the the lace, and we've uh, offered uh, you know a cleaner look to. Uh, it suits our personalities what we have to offer here. Now, also, outside, you've got a, a fire pit out there. So what happens at night at Maria's B&B? This is what I really need to know. You can ask some of the neighbors because, no, it's, uh, it's a place where uh, some of our guests come to retire in the evenings. They sit in the comfy chairs. We turn on the gas fireplace for them. They're able to relax, and uh, it's phenomenal. The uh, outdoor lighting kicks in, and... Uh, it's a, it's a mood that's very uh, romantic, and it's a nice getaway. Now, do you enjoy being the proprietor and running a B&B? &B? It, it's been an adventure. My first year, I would never <laughs> have thought uh, that I it would have enjoyed it this much, but it's, uh, it's been phenomenal. Uh, I thought I would just be making breakfast. Um, not, you know, didn't think I was going to have a whole lot of interaction with the guests, but it's been, uh, it's re been really positive. Now, speaking of the breakfast, you were saying that that's a very important aspect of running a B and B. What what types of um, meals would you be serving in in the morning to your guests? We start off trying to offer the best of what Niagara has to offer. We have um, meats from local um, butcheries uh, as far as Grimsby away, um, where we have uh, free uh, range products. We have uh, local eggs. We deal with all the local fruit that we can get our hands on mm -hmm. and we try to present it in a nice um, you know a little a little bit more fancier than some other places whether it's a b and b or it's a restaurant or whatever we just we have our own style here and it's it's been quite well received well, it's a stunning, stunning property, immaculate, beautifully decorated, and I think it's now time to dig into those chocolate covered mm. strawberries. What do you think I think so too all right. Okay, one of the things that um, I noticed when I was uh, looking at your website before we uh, came here is that there, there's a bit of a lavender theme going on here at Maria's. Do you tell uh, our viewers a little bit about that? 
Well, we didn't we didn't come up with the idea. We we've uh, merely continued on with what uh, the previous owners had uh, started off with, but we've uh, <clears throat> sorry we've uh, planted more lavender. Um, we use lavender scented uh, bath salts in the um, in each of the bathrooms. We have lavender scented uh, spray that we put on the sheets when we press them here, and all the bathrooms are embroidered with lavender, and uh, it's just a little uh, signature at Maria's. A special touch. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you very much. And speaking of B&Bs, we're actually going to go see a vacation rental right now called Heritage Trail, located right in the heart of Old Town. So I'm with Karen Poynton. Uh, Karen is the proprietor of this wonderful vacation property uh, called Heritage Trail. And Karen, I have to say, I'm really, really impressed with this, with this property. First of all, I love the fact that there is something here to do for everybody. You're right on the bicycle trails, on the hiking trails. Sure. There's something for everybody. Tell me a little bit about um, what inspired you about this place. Apparently you said it fits like the proper right <laughs> pair of pants or something. Is that what you said? I did. I said, when I walked into the home, the very first time it's like finding that perfect pair of pants it just it just fit <laughs> and why was that what made that fit so right for you I don't know I just walked in it was just quaint and cozy and I could picture myself here yeah so. it's awesome and you know like I was saying if first of all it's a it's a it's a vacation rental so it's not like a B&B &B. so right. somebody comes in you've got this huge beautiful kitchen yeah. and uh, there's lots of room for everybody you've got yeah. four bedrooms I think? four bedrooms yes so okay. it sleeps eight people comfortably okay yeah. and you've got a great rec room yeah. right well, tell me about the rec room yeah we got lots of games we tried to put games in there for the young and old so we've got uh, uh, shuffleboard we've got the Nintendo Wii we've got um, board games books for all ages to the little kids to mom and dad <laughs> So there's something for everybody. And so you were saying to me, you sort of reach out so you get families that come, yeah. which is great because you're also close to a lot of the things that the kids, like the parkland, I think, yes, is nearby. It's just a, couple, I don't know, two, three-minute walk. To they can, they, The kids can ride their bikes. They can swim. There's a little playground for the little ones. And uh, we are pet-friendly, so they can walk their dogs over there. And then there's a leash-free area for them to run. So there's, there's actually... Um, a tennis court not too far from the area too so that's awesome for the person who's activity driven which I often am this would be a great place for me I know that on a bunch of different counts and also of course you're close to the wineries yeah yeah actually you could even walk to Peller Estates wineries mm -hmm. uh, but other than that most places where you are you have to drive or take a tour Okay. And if you want to get a special spa treatment or get some, you know, get yourself all dolled up for one of the beautiful restaurants here in Niagara on the Lake, there is the, who's nearby? Pe um, Pillar and Post? Pillar and, Pillar and Post. Post, sorry, yeah. The Pillar and Post is just <laughs> three minutes down the road and you can go, go and spend the whole day in their spa or you can walk down there and have an awesome dinner. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's great. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you. <laughs> So we're here at another winery now in Niagara-on-the-Lake, um, Between the Lines Winery. It's uh, fairly new, actually. I think only about 20 months old. And we're here with the proprietor, Greg Virch. Uh, Greg, this is an awesome little spot here. Uh, congratulations, first of all. Thanks for uh, stopping in, and thanks for visiting us at Between the Lines. Now, we're two sisters, and you're two brothers. So tell us, how, what's it like to work with your brother? Well, you'd be surprised at actually working out extremely well, but we made one smart choice, and that was that we didn't pick the same fields to be in. My brother is actually the winemaker for us here at Between the Lines, and I'm a, the viticulturalist. Um, on top of that, I guess he would do the accounting, and I get to do a little bit of the, uh, the product design and the marketing. I'm sure if we were two winemakers, we would have sunk this place a long time ago. <laughs> Well, that's actually how George and I divide things up. We do different things in our business as well. So that works very well. Yeah, now we've got, you've got uh, two wines in particular that we're going to be tasting here today. Um, bo both uh, a little bit unique. Um, I guess we're going to start off with the Vidal. And maybe you can tell us a little bit about, a little bit, first of all, about the grape, Greg, and why you elected for us to sample the Vidal. Well, I guess Vidal is... Uh in my eyes at least, a little bit underestimated um, for what it can produce and what it does do for us here in Ontario as, as a wine industry. It's actually one of my favorite grapes uh, to be growing. It's a phenomenally uh, hardy grape, so it does well in our winters, it does well when, in our conditions, and uh, 
I guess when it comes down to it, is it uh, produces our, <laughs> our number one ice wine, right? Um, the wine that you'll be sampling is Vidal actually as a table wine, and um, Vidal as a table wine can make uh, something really won wonderful actually, a really nice, um, great sipping wine, great for patios, great for the outdoors, I guess. So why don't we open up the, the wine and tell us a little bit about why you named the winery between the lines. Well, um, between the lines has to do with our location here, actually. We knew that we were going to be a small winery for quite a while, and we actually, uh, we had to, I guess we had to get people down here to try and find us. And the, uh, the idea behind the name was, uh, we, we used to have a lot of deliveries here when we were just a vineyard, um, and a lot of the, uh, the truckers would call and ask, uh, where on Creek Road are you located? And we're located between line five and line six. Right, so um, we actually have that on the label as well. Um, you can see uh, Four Mile Creek Road is a crack down the down the middle, and line five and line six are actually the lines cutting across. All right, so we're going to try the Vidal. Um, bit m quite unique as in in um, being a table wine, as uh, Greg was explaining earlier, that uh, a great percentage of the Vidal grape is used for the ice wine here in Ontario and Niagara on the Lakes. So this is going to be something a little bit unique for us. So we'll give it a try, and Greg will explain what aromatics. I think it was a lot of apricot you were saying. Peach is actually the dominant aroma in, in uh, Vidal, and you can find that in the ice wines in, in a concentrated form. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a very, very aromatic grape, even on its own. So um, I guess when it comes to the Vidal, so our 2010 Vidal is actually one of the first wines that my younger brother has made. Uh, he's our winemaker here. Now this wine, um, typical for Vidal actually, has uh, quite a lot of uh, peach aromas, also passion fruit, uh, citrus, uh, and mango. And um, I think that's, that's, that's basically what you'd like or what you are looking for when you want a nice wine to be able to sip on in the summer. Um, the wine is actually quite smooth. It's a, it's a one on the, on the sugar scale, has a really nice acidity, really nice balance, and uh, should drink fantastic. Right. Cheers. Cheers. To brotherly love. <laughs> All, right. All right. So now let's uh, let's move into the red. You've got something unusual for us to try now here as well. Yes. Um, now the wine that we're uh, we're actually going to be tasting next is our uh, Lemberger, and uh, we actually decided uh, here at between the lines to make Lemberger our flagship. Now, the problem with this as, as a flagship is that it's not around for too long. Um, there's only, we only started with very few plants to see how the variety uh, um, does and, and, and if it is successful in Ontario. And uh, it's been absolutely spectacular for us, actually. Uh, really, really great. Um, now, the variety itself is actually um, a variety that's grown in uh, Central and uh, Eastern Europe. And that's what we decided to focus on because the, 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 the climate and the, the growing conditions are very similar. Uh, so this is a variety where we can actually compete very, very well with and we can compete uh, better. So what typically does this wine taste like? It, it often reminds people of Syrah and uh, has a lot of really nice uh, white pepper notes, uh, black pe pepper notes, for example. The, um, the older it gets, it'll actually lose the, the pepper notes and then become uh, um, very, very nice uh, and aromatic, uh, real nice cassis. It can have uh, real nice uh, strawberry and cherry notes, for example. Um, it just, uh, it's actually one of my favorite uh, varieties out there. And we understand this is your last bottle. You're going to have to make some more. We're quite honored. My brother, actually, when we started out, uh, we actually didn't think, I guess, ahead enough to start a library. <laughs> so uh, he, he was the one that sold the last case of uh, Lemberg, and he said, uh, basically, <laughs> what he said is, uh, rather a case sold than not sold. I can definitely smell the pepper notes. That's for sure. Very, very nice. This wine's actually been in oak for about uh, 18 months. Right, and uh, it's, uh, it should be a phenomenal wine to, uh, to, to sip. It's a beautiful variety for here. So between the lines, this is the place to come for some fantastic Vidal, a grape unique, uniquely our own, I would say, and also for this other wonderful Lamb, Lamburger, Lamburger. And two, two brothers, both under 30, congratulations for your uh, entrepreneurship and uh, continued success. Thank you. Well, we're trying hard, and we're hoping to stay around for a long time and maybe make Lemberger part of Ontario's portfolio down the road. Well, we look forward to that. Let's have a toast to that. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.
Cheers. Cheers, Greg. All the best. Thank you. We would like to thank King of Couture for providing all of the snow of Sweden jewelry for the wine ladies. The owner of the Brockamore Manor, Rick Jorgensen, is waiting for us now. This is a gorgeous b and a historical building built in 1809, and they are known for an incredible four-course breakfast. Let's go check it out. We are here at Brockamore Manor with Rick Jorgensen. We are in the great room, and it is a spectacular room. Rick, uh, tell us a little bit about this incredible b and &B. Well, uh, Brockmore Manor dates back to 1809. It was uh, built by Captain John Powell, um, and he built it in preparation for his marriage to uh, Isabella Shaw. Mm -hmm. And Isabella Shaw was the daughter of Ania Shaw, who was uh, uh, a wealthy uh, landowner in Boston that fought um, in the Revolutionary War or War of Independence, depending on which side of the pond you came from. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, he fought alongside uh, Lord Simcoe, um, and when Lord Simcoe was sent uh, out here to resettle, uh, he sent for uh, Aeneas Shaw, who had come up to New Brunswick with the Empire Loyalists. And um, he came out and helped uh, Simcoe settle uh, this area. And he built this gorgeous home for her? Um, uh, uh, Powell built the home. Uh, he was also um, the son of uh, William Dummer Powell, so the first Attorney General of Upper Canada. Mm -hmm. So the home was uh, very prestigious because of the family background. Um, so it was built out of block and stone um, so that uh, in the War of 1812, when the whole town was burned to the ground, um, this home didn't burn to the ground because the walls were uh, made out of stone. So it's one of the few buildings that uh, remain standing after the War of 1812. Mm -hmm. And this is really a stunning um, B&B &B with all the history that it has here. It is so rich and this, the structure, I know you've had an addition put on, it's about 8,000 square feet and every room is um, absolutely, uh, done absolutely incredibly. Um, and there's also a little bit of a, a scary um, history here. I, I think there's a ghost that resides here apparently or maybe you can tell us whether it's true or not. Well, um, it depends on uh, which viewpoint you um, <laughs> you have, right? Um, what was that? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The, the, uh, the, it is purported as part of uh, folklore that uh, we have Sophia, who was Isabella's youngest uh, um, or younger sister, mm -hmm. who lived here with uh, Powell uh, and Isabella. And uh, as the story goes, uh, uh, Brock uh, was visiting Enos Shaw because Shaw was appointed the Executive Council of Upper Canada. And so it, it, it's likely that they would have met at some time because Brock was always uh, looking for money from the uh, administration to help organize the troops. So um, we uh, go by the folklore that uh, Brock uh, met. Um, as the story goes, they fell in love, carried on a romance. and. Uh, uh, when he was uh, killed in the first battle on, in Queenston Heights, um, uh, she she uh, lived a full uh, life. She never married. She uh, stayed single her entire life. Uh, uh, moved into Toronto after they sold the home in the 1830s um, and lived there until she was 80. But as the story goes, she came back uh, visiting and uh, stayed here. Looking for her true love, perhaps. Looking for her true love. Um, Brockamore, the name Brockamore comes from that uh, folklore. It wasn't given to the home when it became a b and It's carried that name for uh, decades prior to, to it being a and b So uh, amour is a French word for love, so Brockamore is love of Brock. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about the, the home, but what about the breakfast part of the bed and breakfast here? Well, um, the, uh, all of the bed and breakfasts in this area are wonderful. Um, we're part of a, a wonderful network of bed and breakfasts in uh, uh, Niagara-on-the-Lake, 
Um, I'm sure you travel the world as, as, as we do, and when we stay in bed and breakfast, none can compare to what uh, people find in, in Niagara on the Lake. And here at Brockamore, we, um, we like to take care of our guests. They have, we sit on almost an acre of land, so they have lots of uh, room to wander around, and um, we have various areas for them to, to sit, and we serve a four-course gourmet-style breakfast that changes uh, every day. So. Um, no one uh, will have to the same breakfast twice here, unless they stay for more than 10 days, and then, <laughs> then we're done. So. That would be absolutely <laughs> awful. <laughs> then you go over the cycle again. You start over again, I guess. No, after the 10th no. uh, day, um, we uh, tell our guests that they get to choose which is their favorite, and everyone else um, has to put up with their choice. So. Okay, well, that's very democratic, I think. Or, or is that autocratic? I'm not really sure. <laughs> and you also have an, an, a very old tree out back. I mean, just to speak to the history of the property as well. Yes, we have uh, a spruce tree that's about, uh, I don't know how, how tall it would be, maybe 80 to 100 feet. Um, that we had an arborist because after a windstorm we had some damage to some trees, so we had him come out and check. And uh, he came out and... Uh, that's Sophie. <laughs> he came out and um, and checked the uh, the trees, and we asked him about the spruce tree because we were a little concerned about it. Mm -hmm. And he said, "No, it's um, strong. It's been there for more than 250 years, so it'll remain standing for a long time." So some of the branches are as big as some of the other trees on the property. It's amazing, incredible. I think we should have a party in this great room. No, what do you think? Absolutely, we um, have parties here quite often. So. Uh, <laughs> It's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful home. Uh, we really enjoy it. Um, it's, it's warm even though it's big. It, it, it feels uh, quite warm and homey and our guests really enjoy coming. Well, thank you for taking the time to speak with us this afternoon, Rick. Well, thank you for visiting and uh, come back anytime and hopefully uh, Soy, uh, Sophia will uh, come and greet you at the door. I'm sure she will. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. <laughs> So we have been traveling in style here in Niagara-on-the-Lake while we are enjoying our fantastic Buick Verano, sporty getting us around from one spot to the next. Thank you, Buick Verano. A big thank you to General Motors. Well, here we are in one of our most favorite places in the world, a wonderful place called Chocolate FX, where they make all kinds of chocolate enrobed goodies. And I'm here with the owner, Art Mills. And Art, uh, this place is unbelievable. Uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about um, what we have in our glasses. Definitely not the vino. Yes, your glass of white is actually white chocolate cashews. Mm -hmm. hey. uh, that sounds amazing. And Suzanne? The red wine is actually red chocolate uh, cherries grown locally in Vineland. Now, how many different varieties do you have here? We have over 90 different varieties, uh, everything from dried fruit, dried nuts, uh, dried specialties like jujubes covered in chocolate, pretzels, you name it. Well, I love your tasting bar. Now, oh, just behind us, there's an incredible <laughs> tasting bar where I know I've almost done, I think I've dipped into almost every little bucket in there. I think I've tasted taste about 15 different kinds. And what an awesome, awesome idea. Well, give us an idea of some of the other ones that we have back there. And what, what, are, your, what are your top sellers? The top sellers would probably be the chocolate-covered blueberries, mm -hmm. uh, the mints. Oh, isn't there an Oreo cookie one or something like that? Yes. <laughs> we have mint with Oreo cookie in it. And we've just started a yogurt-covered uh, line, so yogurt-covered cranberries, yogurt-covered almonds, to name a few. Yeah. yeah, that sounds amazing. And you're quite new at this, at this location, aren't you? Yes, just a year ago this month we moved in here. Now, where do you get the inspiration for your chocolates? All over. It, it really varies from product to product. All right. So I think we should give these a try. What do you think? <laughs> now, it's an, okay, so you, let, you, you try the cashew okay. first, see what you think. I know what I'm going to think. This is going to be amazing. So anyways, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> is it better than white wine? Better than white wine, Georgia? It's a close second. <laughs> All right, let me try mine now. Chocolate-covered cherries. Okay. Like a good Pinot Noir. <laughs> the cherries on the nose mm -hmm. and in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good to me. Do you think we can share, Suzanne, when we get home? No. <laughs> oh, my cashews are better than your cherries. <laughs> All right, Art, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to see you again thank and you to enjoy visiting. these wonderful chocolates. Thank Cheers. you very much.
Cheers. Cheers. And what a wonderful way to end a couple of beautiful days here in Niagara on the lake on a beautiful horse and buggy ride. What a gem of a destination. No wonder it was ranked 12th out of the top 25 destinations in Canada. We invite you all to come on Niagara on the lake. You'll be so glad you did.